minutes within games. There'll be different, you know, the, the game will change after 10 minutes, and it will change again another 10 minutes. It's, it's always different. You've got to be thinking about and processing. You're the ones that make the decisions. We only give you a framework, right? So good observations. Now, obviously, big game Saturday. We want to finish strong. So get rest tonight, get rest tomorrow, get some good carbs in. Thanks very much for turning up. So my name's Carl. I was the one that started ProLine Coaching Academy. Um, we'll have a presentation tonight. I think that's important rather than just saying, here's a team we're setting up. I um, was playing football, started at the age of nine. Um, my mother saw an advertisement in uh, the local newspaper um, for Stokey Rangers looking for players. So I walked up at the trial doing quite well, got selected for the team. But all during my career, I always struggled with the physical side of the game. Not through want of applying myself, because I was a wholehearted, disciplined lad really, but always felt a burning sensation in my legs, shortness of breath, wondering why that was. So I would work extra hard because I thought, you know, I needed to do that to catch up my fitness. Listen, work your socks off, take better care of the ball, and make sure we don't make silly mistakes. It wasn't until the age of 28, I think it was, or 29, I was playing overseas in Australia for a semi-professional club. And to get a new contract there, we had um, medical examinations. And part of that was having a heart test. And the heart test basically picked up that I had a quite rare um, heart defect. And at the time, the cardiologist couldn't believe that I'd managed to carve out a professional and semi-professional football career training at the volume that I did. He actually said that in most of, case, of the cases he's seen, people with this disorder unfortunately have either ended up dying during sport. You know, I'm talking when I was training and playing, I would be in agony. Absolute agony. Keep close. So it kind of like answered all the questions for me. I wondered why, um, how I got through games and training sessions, I'll never know. Um, but I just did. I think it was the, the character and the mental strength that I developed from a, young, from a young boy kind of got me through. But yeah, so I was diagnosed with this rare heart defect. The cardiologist said, you absolutely must quit playing football. Um, you can exercise, but at a very, very low and moderate level. So it's a bit of pill to swallow. Um, so then I went straight into coaching, took a management job at my former club that I played for locally, um, offered my services as a manager, had four fantastic seasons, set records there, we had a 24 game and beat and run, set of players and management team, we all worked tremendously hard. It was something that I always thought I would do anyway, even from a young age, I used to watch coaches and think, yeah, well, I like what they did there, I like what he did, well, I think I could do that a bit differently. They're playing 3 5 2, so they're playing three centre halves like that and two wing backs. They're leaving massive gaps here. We played some lovely balls out to Bertie and Leo. Now James and Hammers is going to come in here. I want you two to identify been, getting that. In my ball. eyes, and I think a lot of the parents and players would echo that, it's been a very successful year. My objectives were to create a, a strong team, no two ways about that. Obviously, to achieve that, I needed to get the right players in. Um, when I talk about the players, it's not just the players, it's the parents as well. They need to be committed and they've been absolutely fabulous, all of them, um, throughout the whole season because it's two nights a week training, it's games, so there's a big commitment. A lot of these parents have other children who have got sporting commitments as well.
that we'd de deliver a program that would significantly improve these players and take them from where they are and, f and, and take them further. And the proof of that is five of our players uh, already in our first year um, have been approached by professional football academies. There's yeah. Hamza Sadiq. Um, Hamza came quite late into football. Um, I've worked with Hamza again on and off for a number of years. Really applies himself to the programme, has always conducted himself very well in his training programme. And I knew Hamza was somebody that would definitely attract attention. He's a really good coach. He helps me a lot with my strength. Individual, uh, like on the ball, off the ball, gives a lot of feedback. As a coach, is that he always wants to win, and uh, there's some coaches where they um, they don't want to win. They just bothered about playing well. He has a lot of passion. He always wants his players to be the best they can be. He has a go-win attitude. Never wants to lose. Always loves winning. And he wants the best for the lads. And he's got the brains, like Pep Guardiola to win the games. Go on Jack. Oh, he's run out of beans. Oh. Hamza! He's got a course! You're in a bad position, you're not going to work! I'm a very disciplined and methodical coach and in my job as a teacher um, I plan and I like to deliver. I do believe in, in players having the freedom to express themselves. Um, so, you know, on any given session, on any given match day, there'll be some objectives. But within that, I try to communicate to players that they're the decision makers. You know, they're the ones that have got to try and find ways to win football matches. They're the ones that have got to, you know, try and be creative and intelligent in their thought process, in their, in their decisions. So I'm very big on players becoming thinkers. If Ethan wants to play a 60-yard ball across the field, we don't see that as long ball football. We actually see that as creativity and confidence. So we don't say to our players, we'll just keep it short all game. Well, actually, no. If there's moments where you think a longer pass um, will um, help the team, you do that. I enjoy the crap with the lads. I think we have a really good team bond and um, I just look forward to going training every week and playing games at the weekend. I enjoy like playing and training, challenging because we're all good players so like it's a good environment to be around when we're all playing well. So what's our philosophy? We spoke about it before, we want players to have high levels of technical efficiency um, and what we mean by that is basically being comfortable on the ball, being comfortable in tight areas, midfield players having the bravery to switch the ball to penetrate, um, defensive players to get it off the goalkeeper, our strikers not just to run in the channels and over the top but to come and link the play. I've improved my fast feet, of, like, I can take players on much better than I could when we started and physically I can keep the ball better, better now than I could ever before. Obviously the best scenario is a professional footballer but I'm hoping to become a better player and uh, for the future years you never know it might happen. So obviously it's a little bit more than just creating better players. Um, we're obviously very, very big on behaviour. Um, we like our lads to come in and see this as an education, not just becoming a better footballer. And that involves values such as having respect for their teammates, listening to one another, encouraging and helping one another. Um, so you know that's that's certainly uh, an important factor in my in my work. Yeah, I do like hard work. I do like players to apply themselves in training sessions and games. What we always say to players, we have, a, we have an ethos, don't we, from where we say, listen, I don't care if you make a mistake on the ball, if you go to trap and it goes into your foot, if you try passing and it doesn't get there, listen, don't worry about that, go and try it again. If it doesn't happen, then go and try it again. The only, probably, um, criteria we have about players where, uh, in terms of what we do demand, is hard work rate off the ball, sheer work rate and sheer commitment. Because if you haven't got that, you're not going to develop as a footballer. Yeah, highly recommend it. I think three, three quarters way through the season, I think he's improved me a lot. Um, I believe, yeah, it could help anyone straight away. Yeah, I definitely recommend the programme to others who want to improve and take the, uh, their football to the next level.